Hey Banditos, welcome back. This is Tux and we're diving into another Division 2 build video. And today we're focused on a really good rifle build inspired by the movie Tears of the Sun. And this is part of our movie build series. Let's get into it. We created this in Saturday night's live stream. And from where we started to where we finished was quite the process and ended up with something absolutely amazing. So this is a build based off of a movie and that movie is Tears of the Sun. It's not exactly a new movie. During a live stream, I think on like Thursday or Friday, and somebody asked me, hey Tux, what's your favorite play style? And I told them really it's headshot builds. That could be rifles, marksman rifles, pistols, or shotguns. But the reason why is because I like the tactical and precision based fighting, similar to what a marksman rifle or a sniper does but at the same time i like the exhilaration of running gun and that's where this example of a build came up because it kind of led me to where i visualize my combat style and that's formally called a designated marksman not a sniper and so don't be confused because here in this game we call marksman rifles snipers and so as a kind of part of a larger class so don't be confused by that this is actually a rifle build but we are going to be centering on headshots and it's absolutely an obliterator. I mean, we're just mowing through enemies. Okay, so I'm going to show you a quick clip on Tears of the Sun. This is only going to take a second because I just want you to see a couple of key parts. But we did watch the full clip of this fight scene during that live stream. So I hope you join us on these live streams because we do some pretty cool stuff. Okay, so there's a key guy here and I'll pause it on him. So this guy. Okay, so this is the guy we're actually basing the build off of. It's his combat style. And so notice the weapon he's running. It's an M1A. So, and he's got a pretty aggressive scope on it. But what's really cool about his fighting style is that he can fall back and assist and support the sniper and pick off guys from deep ranges. At the same time, he can he can play right inside with the guys running assault rifles in close quarter combat. And so that makes him a very versatile player, but in either case, his tactics require precision, and that's the kind of fighting that I like. Not only precision, but also amazing time to kill because of this play style. And so you're hitting critical points. Those are kill shots. You know, he's not just maining the enemies. That's how I want the build to play out too. And if the build is assembled correctly, like how a marksman rifle build should be, then you should be able to run and gun out of cover. And it would be your kill power that's giving you most of the ability to do that because you're going to be running with the fastest time to kill in the game. For this demonstration, I'm running all four directives. I'm not running the fifth one, which is the broken armor one because it's always glitching out. So. I'm just kind of avoiding that almost always nowadays. So this is going to give us 100% more XP by playing this way. So what's really unique about marksman rifles or rifles, I'll just careful how I use my terminology, is that they don't require a lot of ammo, but the game gives you a lot of ammo. So we're going to be one shot killing right out of the gate here, as you can see that. And that's without memento trophies. And so we have amazing survivability. You can see that from my bonus armor. And then I also have a shield in case shit gets uh, crazy, <laughs> you know? So that's unique. Snipers can't run shields. And so people will be like, oh, well, why don't not just run a, a sniper rifle? Well, you can't do what you're seeing here with a sniper. To be fully powered with this build, it's about, um, you need to get about 40% on your trophies. Um, but it's you're gonna get there really quick, so it's nothing to worry about. And you can already one shot, like I said, right out of the gate, but to consistently chain kill without much disruption. So, which we basically there now. So, so it only took a minute to get there. Extremely potent build. You can have a lot of fun. I mean, you can play aggressive, tactical. You might not be accustomed to using the 8x scope, but I say get used to it because it's really valuable to be able to run a scope. You can do this without a scope too, but that 30% headshot damage is cool, but it also it allows you to um, uh, make micro adjustments with more precision. So on miss, right? So you miss a shot and then you can quickly throw out that next shot and, and get it to be on target. Okay, so now we have our TAC-50 ammo and that's gonna make the gameplay go a lot faster, a lot more smooth because the TAC-50 is gonna uh, get us powered up to our headshot potential right away and it's easier to use than the Nemesis. But the Nemesis is still good. I still recommend it for bosses. So yeah, you see me using my TAC-50. I'm not worried about TAC-50 ammo. We're constantly earning it, but I use it to acquire, to pump up my uh, Headhunter's talent. It's just a fast way to do it. You don't have to do it, but it's just so much faster to play that way. 
get straight to the chain kill you know where normally you have to kill one or two enemies or, or at least uh yeah maybe two enemies to get to that capability so here's the boss let's finish him so he's got ragers on notice that so hit him at 10 million so a lot of the bosses you're not going to be able to one shot them with this rifle but we're not concerned about it uh, because we clear out and what i recommend you do is clear out all his support so that it's just you and him and he's not an issue at that point so putting out a couple of bullets not a big deal okay quick break to walk you through the build the build is centered around the classic m1a the non-named version so this is easy to farm you should get it anywhere that rifles are it's a very good weapon it's got several different skins so it's got this decadence which is all black this petroglyph and then i am running the moose head if you're new to the game you probably don't have these skins they might be in the store so check that out so i am running mine uh, again to stay consistent with how that actor in the movies tears of the sun was running his rifle i'm keeping it consistent to that and i like playing with the 8x scope again i think it adds to your precision so if you are going to stay in cover then i recommend the digital scope more it's got uh, better crosshairs actually it also has a variable zoom and less penalty we have the reload speed mod here and then of course i'm running a larger mag i got damage to targets out of cover please note that i have an expertise level 10 on mine you're not going to need that but it does give me a little bit of an edge you'll probably be able to perform maybe even at expertise zero but the expertise really what affects it on this particular build is how much armor you can run so that's the impact factor how much armor and how much protection from elites that you can run on the build and i'm going to show you that in a second okay so that's what it that's what it actually affects and so if you don't want to run expertise on your m1a that's fine just realize that you're not going to be able to run probably all the protection from elite mods that i have however you could probably keep the armor uh but you'll have to test that out so we got a 2.2 second reload speed and then i'm running the determined talent so that's allowing us to chain kill quickly on the move and that's really handy so we were running some other talents in the live stream and i was even running ranger and stuff like that you can put on more damage but a lot of damage talents aren't going to make sense for you because of how this uh build plays so I, I don't recommend damage talents i recommend things like future perfect or preservation or determined whatever but damage talents aren't going to help you because headhunter is doing most of the work and the rifles just can't carrying it forward okay that's what we're doing there that's allowing us to chain kill so running the nemesis as a backup i use it in the very beginning when i don't have tac 50 ammo to help charge up my chest piece otherwise i use it against bosses or in case i run out of tac 50 ammo the pistols whatever i'm not actually using it now you do want to run sharpshooter here that's going to give you breathe control which is 15 percent more stability and better target acquisition also it's going to give you more headshot damage that's pretty key and more importantly it does give you access to that digital scope if you decide that's what you want to run or the chest piece let's start there so i'm running chain killer and this is giving us a five percent weapon damage but most importantly that perfect head hunter i'm running chain killer specifically for the damage to armor actually not for the perfect head hunter you don't really need perfect head hunter uh, it doesn't really add too much value we got weapon handling and headshot damage and headshot damage key to perfect head hunter is that you need to make sure that your build has 150 percent headshot damage on your primary weapon and of course your big heavy snipers too and so we have that and then and if you do, then your headshot kill is going to transfer 1,250% of that damage to your primary weapon. And that's the mechanic that we're playing into and why we're so darn powerful. That is giving us the time to kill to play out of cover basically with no shield. And I only pop the shield as needed. And that's a very unique capability to play that way, by the way. Not shields in general, but to be able to be a, basically a sniper on the run with a shield is unique because you can't pair shields and sniper rifles together. This isn't a sniper, but it plays like one. Hey, banditos, the community we have built together wouldn't have been possible without you so as a thank you for supporting my channel i am bringing you the hookup on member perks including even more division 2 content and the celebrated gaming music playlists if you're not part of texas players club now is your chance my mask is the second piece of walker for that five percent damage to armor and i'm running protection from elites on this one more weapon handling and headshot damage you can never have enough weapon handling with this weapon and i'm mostly doing it for the reload speed because we're playing fast and so you want the faster reloads the better the m1a's by default don't have a great reload speed and you are working with a small mag remember 15 rounds so having a good reload speed is going to be very helpful 
and you making sure you get out alive. The gloves are contractors, and of course, the, we don't care about that LMG damage. We are running it for that 5%, or excuse me, 8% additional damage to armor, headshot damage, and then I'm running a red core here. So yes, I'm rolled all into headshot damage, damage to armor, and basically weapon handling. That is the formula. And then the knees are best in slot for a rifle build. For the most part, you don't have to run them, but damage to targets out of cover is really gonna help you. It's a multiplier too, so definitely edging you up to make sure you get those critical values. I got weapon damage and headshot damage. So we're not running crits. You can run Providence here, but I decided this brings more value to the table because I get to run my armor and get my weapon damage too. So I'm running the Picaro's holster and I have headshot damage and there's a little bit of skill haste. The backpack is the memento. So we tested several backpacks. This ended up being the best, of course. Why? Because we're playing aggressive out of cover and grabbing those trophies is a constant. Notice I have no armor on kill on this build. That is crazy if you think about how I'm playing. There's several reasons why I don't need it. One of them is the memento. So the memento does give you armor on kill in the form of bonus armor on kill thanks to those short-term buffs the short-term buffs of the memento there's really nothing better out there i don't care what anybody says the short-term buffs are like the best thing in this game i'll be honest with you you got the three cores i got protection from elites note that and for every red core we have on our build we're gonna get five percent weapon damage when we grab that trophy which as you saw from the gameplay is all the time how many red cores do i have i have five so that's 25 percent additive weapon damage that's stackable so i can go 25 50 75 get it then when you have 30 trophies Feats, there's another 30% weapon damage adding to that too. So now you have a base of 30 plus 25, so 55, 80, so on and so forth. Not everybody plays into the short-term buffs. That's why it's not always the best option. But for this gameplay style, being a tactical designated marksman rifle player with precision, one-shot kill, this is amazing. And then I get the 10% bonus armor on kill. I'm running two cores. That's why, again, I ran the Picaro's holster and the memento gives us the second core. So that's 20% bonus armor on kill. 20% armor on kill. It only lasts 10 seconds, but trust me, your white armor only lasts 10 seconds too, because they're constantly pecking at you with micro damage or heavy handed damage. Either way, you're always taking damage. So 10% timer on bonus armor is really the same thing as just regular white armor, because you're always taking damage. Really cool. And we're getting 3% armor regeneration, which is really cool. And so with the bonus armor, the armor regeneration and the time to kill on this build, we don't need any standard armor on kill on the build and we are able to survive that's the formula remember we always talk about the survival pie <laughs> imagining uh survivability as a big pie right and the largest slice of that pie is time to kill when we created this build we started there we started with damage we got it to where it needed to be which is 10 million so once we accomplished that we started building in our defense for me i know by experience that bonus armor is the best kind of defense you can really have for the play style that we're rolling with because our time to kill is so high that three percent armor regen is sufficient that's all the heals we really need on the build then we got skill efficiency for a skill tier and we are actually using that too and so we're also going to get 30 percent skill efficiency when we have full stacks and i'm running a fixer so that's going to buff our heals a little bit so we're at 25,000. this is without trophies and then of course the shield it is a tier three shield thanks to the memento and the armor cores we've decided to put on the build either way it's not at a high risk of being broken and one is because we're not over relying on it and two we have a fast time to kill and three we got the three armor cores so you're good to go there let's look at the stats the key stat on this build is the 185 percent headshot damage you can play around with this depending on whether you want protection from elites or not i got 26 percent protection from elites that's two mods and then we have the three percent armor regen but i don't have any trophies right here so that's what it looks like no actual armor on kill and we're running a little over 1.1 million armor you can do unstoppable before uh vigilance and protect it more with your shield it's as well as Bloodsucker for lots of bonus armor. Those are all great options if you don't have the memento. Okay, so now that we have all our trophies, I just want to show you a couple of quick minutes of gameplay. Let's see if we can find the enemies though. They're all hiding like gorillas in the mist over here. There's one. So we should be able to take her out right away. There it is, 13 million. And so this build is precisely tuned for um, solo uh, gameplay. So keep that in mind. Uh, and that's an important detail because the enemies scale when you add more people to your group. That one shot chain kill capability needs to be retuned if you're gonna play this in group. Now, you don't have to chain kill with one shot, but it, boy, is it more fun to play that way. So I recommend trying to maintain that no matter what size of group you play in. But you shouldn't have too much problem. So uh, let's look at our numbers here. Now, we, we don't really wanna look at the crit numbers because we can't rely on crits with these types of builds. So we want to look at the non-crit values. So that's 10.4, 10.5 million. And that's that's pretty much what I expect. I think it goes up to about 10.8, let's call it 11 million. 
So you need 10 million to kill an elite in heroic, right? And so that's the number that's gonna change when you play in group, it's gonna start scaling up. And so you need to know what those numbers are. The testing range isn't a very good place to figure that out. You kind of got to crunch the math and then just memorize it. Um, and so here's the table to do so. All right, let's take out the Hefe here. So the MNA also does a pretty good job of uh, staggering. Um, not on him, apparently, but it does a really good job of staggering, which is going to also add a ton of survivability for you. See how you staggered right there? A lot of the weapons you probably love in this game and that you feel like, hey, I'm a survivor, and a lot of that's because this gun is so good. That's that's probably why. It's probably staggering for you, and then you got a really good time to kill behind that. So you get your first shot out, you stagger them so they don't shoot back, and then you got a time to kill to kill them before they recover and shoot back. There you go. We got a medic up there to pick him off. So yeah, you do got some range capabilities, even with the rifle. Uh, I like using my Nemesis, I mean my TAC-50, so. We got a special relationship. But plus again, you know, kick starts my power up for my chest talent, so. And because of all these headshots, so see that little orange bar next to my ammo? It's the vertical one I'm talking about, the vertical orange bar. That bar uh, increases by two marks with every headshot kill, and you see all the headshot kills that we're doing, so. Hey, I just put out this countdown shocker build. Pretty cool. So it uses the new exotic shocker punch holster. You can use it definitely outside of the countdown game mode, but I wanted to showcase it there because it's got some unique applications and it aligns really well with that game mode. Check it out here. Follow me. You're still here. It's over, go home. Go.